Ten point one. Tetris, the best-selling video game ever. Over thirty-five years old, and it is still played all over the world. It is said that it's difficult to find a video game player who has never heard of Tetris. Over four hundred and ninety-five million have been sold worldwide, and it's still selling. The game has a long and unusual history. It was created in Russia in 1984 by Alexei Pajitnov, an artificial intelligence researcher at the Russian Academy of Science in Moscow. Pajitnov invented games as a hobby, and many of them were enjoyed by his colleagues at the academy. Tetris, most of all. The game became so popular it spread from Moscow to Budapest. And in 1989, it was discovered by a British software publisher, and then exported to the U.S. Tetris is the biggest-selling video game by far. Minecraft is the only other video game to have sold over 100 million units. Why has it remained so popular for so many years? There are a great many classic video games. So, what is it about Tetris that has made it so universally popular? It is an easy puzzle game to play. It's made up of coloured squares, simple enough to be played by everyone, young and old. But it is mastered by only a few. It can be played on any computer. You don't need the latest model, and people in every country can play. Its simplicity means you can play as you go. Anywhere, any time, you don't have to sit and play for long periods of time. In 1989, the Nintendo Game Boy was launched in Japan, and Tetris was the perfect game for this—the first handheld computer, as of course it is today with the smartphone. It is played by generations of people on tablets, laptops, smartphones, and game consoles. There is little doubt that years from now it will be downloaded by our children and grandchildren, the latest and new version of the most important video game in history. Ten point two, inventions that changed the world. One, paper was invented by a Chinese government official called Tsai Lun in 105 A.D. The first paper was made from a mixture of plants and cloth. Since the 18th century, paper has been made of wood because it is much stronger than cloth. Two. The printing press was invented in 1440 by a German printer called Johannes Gutenberg. Today, everything is done by computer, and more words are printed every second. Than were printed every year in the 15th and 16th centuries. Three. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone in 1876. Bell was born in Scotland, but he moved to America and became a scientist and teacher of the deaf. He worked with his assistant Thomas Watson, and the first sentence he ever sent was, "Watson." Come here, I want you. Four. Guglielmo Marconi was an Italian physicist. He invented the radio in 1895. In 1909, he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics. The company he founded, the Marconi Company Limited, was bought by the Swedish firm Ericsson in 2006. Five. Television was invented by a Scottish engineer, John Logie Baird, in 1924. The first BBC television broadcasts in 1929 were made with Baird's system. In 2006, Logie Baird was named one of the ten greatest Scottish scientists in history. Six. The first ballpoint pen was invented by the Hungarian journalist Laszlo Biro in 1938. Many other ballpoint pens have been designed over the years, but in the UK they are still called Biros. 
Seven. The Apple PC was invented by two American computer engineers, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, in 1976. The name Apple was chosen because it was Jobs' favourite fruit. Apple computers have always been highly praised for being both user friendly and beautifully designed. 10.3 Statistics Worldwide 1. 60% of video games are bought by men and 40% by women. 2. Nearly 75 trillion emails are sent every year. 3. Over 40,000 questions are answered by Google every second. 4. eBay was invented in 1995. 5. Facebook has been translated into 76 languages since it began. 6. The first Twitter message was sent in 2006. 7. Airbnb was founded in San Francisco in 2008. 8. Amazon.com was founded in 1994. 10.4. Questions and answers. 1. How many video games are bought by men and women? 60% are bought by men, 40% by women. And did you know the average age of a video game player is 38? 2. How many emails are sent every year? Nearly 75 trillion. The average office worker receives 121 emails a day. 3. How many questions are answered by Google every second? Over 40,000 a second. About 15% of these have not been asked before. 4. When was eBay invented? In 1995. Pierre Omidia was 28 when he invented it. He was a billionaire by the time he was 31. 5. How many languages has Facebook been translated into? 76. There are now over 2 billion Facebook users. Of these, 83 million are fake profiles. 6. When was the first Twitter message sent? In 2006 by Jack Dorsey. Now 500 million tweets are sent every day by 328 million users. 7. Where and when was Airbnb invented? In San Francisco in 2008. It is now used by 150 million people in 191 countries. 8. When was Amazon.com founded? In 1994, Jeff Bezos started it from his garage. It is now the world's greatest online shopping company, with over 300 million customers. 10.5 Words that go together. Video game. Text message. Facebook. Laptop. 10.6. Noun plus noun. Business call. Business card. Business deal. Football team. Football ground. Football game. Phone number. Phone call. Computer program. Computer game. Computer virus. 10.7. Adverb plus past participle. 1. She has a wonderful job. She's very well paid.
2. I didn't enjoy that novel. It was really badly written. 3. You don't need to spend a lot of money on clothes to look well-dressed. 4. Our office is really well-equipped. We have all the latest machines. 5. I hope they don't bring their dogs. They're so badly behaved. 6. Can I have my steak very well done, please? I don't like it rare. 7. Surely you've heard of Ed Sheeran. He's a really well-known singer. 10.8. Talking about you. 1. Do you ever play computer games? No, but my nephew does all the time. 2. Do you send a lot of text messages? Of course I do. Doesn't everybody? I text all the time. 3. Do you take a lot of photos? I do. I have hundreds on my phone. Too many, really. I put them on Facebook sometimes. 4. Who does the most housework in your home? Not me, or my dad. My mum always says, Oh, I'll do it. You're too slow. 5. How do you like your steak? Medium rare. I don't like it well done. 6. Is your school well equipped? It's OK. We have a lot of technical equipment. Trouble is, it sometimes breaks down. The teacher can't fix it. But there's a tech genius in our class who usually can. 7. What do you think is the most important discovery ever made? Hmm, a difficult one. There are so many. The discovery of DNA is pretty important, I think. 10.9. The world's number one habit. Chewing gum. Part 1. This week on Worldly Wise, we look at the world's most common habit. Chewing gum. Yes, chewing gum. Every year, 374 trillion sticks of chewing gum are made. And we chew 100,000 tonnes of it. So why do we do it? And how many of us know what it's made of? Excuse me, I see you are chewing gum. <laughs> yeah. And uh, do you have any idea what it's made of? Made of? <sighs> nah, I've never thought about it. <laughs> what about you? Do you know? Um, no idea. Rubber, maybe? And uh, do you know who invented it? The Americans? Yeah, the Americans. I bet it was invented in the US. And finally, tell me, why do you chew it? Why? why? Uh, I don't know. It's cool. It's cool to chew gum. It's something to do. Cool or not, chewing gum isn't made of rubber. And it wasn't invented by the Americans. It was invented by the Swedes. The Swedes, I hear you say? But listen to Lillian Wood, a chewing gum expert. Lillian, welcome. Thank you. Well, the history of chewing gum goes back thousands of years. In Sweden, in 1993, a skeleton of a teenage boy was found. This boy was 9,000 years old and in his mouth was some gum. It was made of tree sap and honey. And this is the first known chewing gum. That's amazing. Perhaps we've always needed to chew things. After all, babies are born wanting to chew. They put everything into their mouths. So, Lillian, why do we chew gum? We chew to clean our teeth and freshen our breath, but also just because we like chewing. It keeps us calm. Yeah, keep calm and chew gum. Yes, the ancient Greeks chewed a gum called mastica. It's a type of tree sap. 
The Greeks thought it was good for the health and it made the breath sweet smelling. We also know that in the first century AD, the Mayan Indians in South America enjoyed chewing gum. They chewed a tree sap called chicle. They wrapped it in leaves and put it in their mouths. The first packet of chewing gum. Yes, indeed. The first packet of gum. 10.10 Part 2 The History of Modern Chewing Gum So, what's the history of modern chewing gum? Well, in 1871, Thomas Adams, an American inventor, introduced chewing gum from Mexico to the US and it became popular very quickly with American kids. Yes, but it was in 1892 when a very clever young man called William Wrigley decided chewing gum was the thing of the future. He was a business genius. He was the first to use advertising to help sell his products. Really? What did he do? He hired hundreds of pretty young girls. He called them the Wrigley Girls and they walked up and down the streets of New York and Chicago, handing out free chewing gum. Millions of pieces were given away. Very clever, very modern. Yes, he also had huge electric billboards made. One billboard was a mile long and ran along the side of a train track. So, of course, Wrigley's gum soon became very popular all over the US. Mm. But how did the rest of the world get to love chewing gum? Well, during the Second World War, American soldiers were given Wrigley's gum to help them stay calm. In fact, in 1944, all chewing gum production went to the US Army and they took it overseas and gave it to children. Soon they were followed everywhere with the cry, Got any gum, chum? So, of course, it spread worldwide. Yes, I believe it's even taken into space by the astronauts. So, Lillian, what is it made of? Well, the strangest thing about gum today is that nobody knows exactly what it's made of. The recipe is secret. Ah, thank you, Lillian. That's all fascinating. But there's a problem with gum. It's a favourite habit, but when the flavour has gone and we finish chewing, what do we do? We throw it away. Chewing gum litter covers the streets of all our towns. Did you know that the cost of cleaning it from the streets of London is more than £10 million a year? Now, that's a fact worth chewing on. 10.11 Phone numbers 0070 2466 10.12 1. Patrick and John Hi John, it's Pat Hi Pat, where are you? I'm at the station, on my way home from work I thought I could hear a lot of noise in the background I'll be quick, because my train's due. I I just wanted to ask you... Sorry, you're breaking up. I couldn't hear that. I know, it's not a good signal. But listen, I'm calling because I can't make it on Thursday. What's that? I said I can't make Thursday. You can't make Thursday? Yeah. Are you free on Friday instead? Friday? Uh, I'm not sure. Can I get back to you? Sure, that's fine. Oh, there's my train. Speak later. Yeah, speak to you later then. Bye. 2. John and Emma
Hello. Hello, Emma. It's John. I'm trying to get hold of Patrick. I'm afraid he's not in. Have you tried his mobile? Yeah, I tried that first, but he's not answering. It's probably switched off. He's at the cinema with Richard. Oh, okay. Can you give him a message then? Of course. Just tell him Friday's fine. Okay. I'll tell him as soon as he's back. Thanks, Emma. Anyway, how are you? Why aren't you at the cinema? Oh, I was tired and I had to finish some work. Well, tell that husband of yours I'll see him Friday straight after work. I'll do that. I hope to see you soon, John. You too. Bye. Bye. Three. Chantal, Harriet, Patrick, and Teresa. Good morning, Wales and Mary International. Chantal speaking. How can I help you? Hello. Could I speak to Patrick Doyle, please? I'm afraid his line's busy. Would you like to hold? Yes, please. It's ringing for you now. Thank you. Hello, Patrick Doyle's office. Teresa speaking. Hello, can I speak to Patrick Doyle, please? Who's speaking, please? This is Harriet Smith from Digby and Moss Associates. Oh, good morning, Miss Smith. I'll put you through immediately. Thank you. It's Harriet Smith on the line for you, Patrick. Harriet, good to hear from you. Are you back from that conference in New York? Yes, and I wondered whether you'd spoken to. Four. Teresa and Emma. Hello, Patrick Doyle's office. Hi, Teresa. It's Emma. Oh, hello, Mrs. Doyle. Can I speak to Patrick, please? Oh, I- I'm afraid he has someone with him at the moment, Mrs. Doyle. Is it urgent? Do you want me to interrupt him? No, no, it's not urgent. It can wait until this evening. I've got a meeting myself in a few minutes. Just tell him I rang, and I'll see him this evening at home. Will do. I hope there isn't a problem. No, no, not a problem. Good news, actually. Bye, Teresa. Oh, bye, Mrs. Doyle. <laughs>